Welcome to level two, lesson three. My name is Ria the Trader from TradingWing.net. In this lesson, you will learn about two common terminology used when trading. These terminologies are known as long or going long and short or shorting. So let's get started. What does long or going long mean? This means buying a stock or security at a certain price and expecting to sell at a higher price for profit. For example, if you were to buy shares of Apple at $100 per share and sell it at $105 per share for profit, then you have gone long. Let's look at the conditions for going long. In the most ideal world, all four of these conditions need to be met. However, many traders look for one or two conditions to be met before taking a long position. The first and most important condition for going long is being in a bullish market. The second condition is having a recent or upcoming catalyst. The third condition is technical analysis trends showing signs of an incoming price increase. And finally, fundamental analysis data showing signs of an incoming price increase. Again, not all traders look for all four criteria to be met. However, having all four criteria is the prime condition for going long. Now let's talk about shorting. What does short or shorting mean? Shorting means you are selling a stock or security at a certain price and expecting to buy at a lower price for profit. For example, if you were to sell shares of Apple at $100 a share and buy back at $95 a share for profit, then you are shorting. Now you may be asking, how do you sell something you do not own? And that is a great question. And that is an important part of shorting. Shorting requires borrowing shares from your broker. This is because brokers typically own shares of certain companies. If your broker does not have shares available, you typically cannot short that specific stock. To put it into better terms, when you are shorting, you're essentially asking your broker to lend you their shares, promising them to enter at a better price. If you successfully enter or buy at a lower price than you borrowed, you get to keep the difference as profit. I have placed an asterisk beside that specific statement for a reason that I will get into in a few moments. If you, however, fail to buy back at a lower price, you will owe the amount lost back to your broker. A very important term to remember when shorting is short interest. Short interest is not the same as interest charged on a mortgage or on a car payment. Short interest is calculated by taking the total number of shares and not yet bought back and dividing that by the total number of shares shorted, including those that have been bought back. For example, if 100,000 shares were shorted and 20,000 shares were bought back, then your first number would be 80,000. This is because we subtracted 20,000 from the initial 100,000 shares shorted. Your second number would be the total number of shares shorted, including those that have been bought back. And so including those 20,000 shares, therefore 100,000. So your short interest in this particular case would be 0 0.8 or 80%. Now let's talk about that asterisk that I mentioned earlier. Yes, you do keep the difference as profit. However, your broker may charge an interest rate for borrowing shares from them. 
this type of interest is in fact similar to mortgage interest or car payment interest. When looking at shorting, similarly to going long, there are conditions that need to be met. The first and most important condition for taking a short position is that you must be or should be in a bearish market. The second condition for going short is a recent or upcoming catalyst. The third condition for going short is technical analysis trends showing signs of an incoming price decrease. And finally, fundamental analysis data showing signs of an incoming price decrease. To be a more successful trader, it is important that all four criteria are met. And that concludes this lesson.